the world at Fred Olsen and where we are. This meeting is being recorded. So um, we like to say that you can explore the world the Olsen way, which is our way to explore the world. And we do believe that we do this quite different oh, from other cruise lines out there. So in recent years, we've seen a new era emerging in cruising. There is a trend for everything to get bigger and busier and for a cruise to be seen as an alternative to a luxury large resort with a limitless flurry of activity. But this is not for us. We believe here at Fred Olsen there is another way to cruise, a way that is based on five generations of seafaring, where cabins are called cabins and ships simply look like ships, where the journey is just as important as the destination that we'll be visiting. In our world at Fred Olsen, we believe that smaller is better, and we believe in keeping the experience on board uncrowded, warm and civilised, treating passengers as guests like the family run business that we are. It would be easy to follow the trends and go with the crowds, but we never will, because this is our way, the Olsen way to see the world. So I'm just gonna run over 10 principles really that we believe um, set us apart from other cruise lines out there. So the first one is we are proud to sail our own course. So we're free to do things a different way, mainly because we are a family run independent company. So that means we're not owned by a big American organization. So we can go the world over. We can go and visit places like Cuba, where we know other cruise lines aren't able to visit because they are American owned. We can also visit places like the Falkland Islands and then down to Argentina as well. Of course, there are people out there that do prefer um, and enjoy busier and bigger ships, but this is not for everyone. And it's certainly not for us. We do prefer to do things our way, the Olsen way. We believe that smaller is better. So on board our ships, we have fewer guests. So the atmosphere on board our ships is always warm and similar. Our smaller ships allow us to visit the more interesting places that the world has to offer. We believe that handcrafted, not mass produced. So our, we pride ourselves on putting our all into the Fred Olsen cruising experience. Our itineraries are created from scratch every single year. Our service is genuinely personal and each and every area of our ship is designed by hand. It's all about the people, all of it, everything. Um, we believe that there are certain things that can only happen when people put genuine care and positivity into what they do. We believe that you can have all the equipment in the world, but in the end, it all comes down to the people. And we believe that we are travellers more than we are tourists. So our way is about creating experiences that attract like-minded travel enthusiasts. People as excited to engage with the wonders of the world as much as we are. We believe in the joy of the journey. So we believe the purpose of a cruise is to experience the wonders of the world by always looking out and not facing in. Maritime is certainly in our DNA. The Olsen uh, family has been sailing for nearly 200 years and we will never lose sight of our love for the sea. That's why we will always choose to sail ships that look like ships rather than hotels or holiday resorts. We travel respectfully. We have a great respect for the natural world and the diverse cultures and the places that we visit. We run smaller ships so we can travel lightly rather than overwhelm destinations, beauty spots, and also the people in the destinations that we choose to visit. We design everything with elegant simplicity and attention to detail. We choose linen, not cotton, leather, not plastic. Our focus is always on quality and our ships are genuinely loved by us with every detail closely considered and reviewed. An eye debt best to scalp in the best of company in the, Norwegian, in the Norwegian native tongue. Our guests and crew are like-minded. They're genuinely friendly, and we are very proud to say that as a result of this, we have more returning guests than any other cruise line. It's always increasing. I think now we're about 70% of our guests on board our ships have cruised with us one, at least once previously. Um, so we're very, very um, grateful, particularly over the last uh, two years or so, that a lot of our regular guests that may have had cruises cancelled in the past due to COVID um, have stuck with us and changed cruise to cruise to cruise. Um, we were just looking at some stats the other day, actually, and uh, one gentleman had had a cruise booked and sadly it got cancelled and had to change to another one and another one nine different times. But he stuck with us 
and um, he's due to travel in April finally. So uh, it's great that we've got so many regular passengers um, and have stuck with us over the hard times. So I'm just going to talk to you about um, the, the, particularly the new ship. So uh, during the pandemic, we were the only cruise line that was bold enough and brave enough to go out there and buy some two new ships. Um, so the first off is the Belletta, which is probably um, quite a key ship for you living in the southeast. It's going to be the ship that's going to be cruising out of Tilbury, Dover and also Southampton. So Belletta is currently at sailing the Norwegian coastline. She's got a whole group of people on board cruising up to see the Northern Lights. And actually last night, the images that were sent back from the ship were absolutely amazing. Um, and everybody on the ship were, were watching the Northern Lights straight from the back deck, from the top deck of the ship, which was fantastic. So Belletta, uh, named after Fred Olsen's great, great grandmother, she's now our new flagship. She carries 1,338 guests. Um, and when you compare that to the likes of Balmoral, who carry about roughly about 10 or 20 passengers just less than Belletta. Now, although Belletta and Borealis are our new ships or newer ships, um, they're very spacious. Um, and I think that's probably more important now than ever before. So our new ships, um, they've got more restaurants, more bars and lounges. Um, bigger swimming pools, more jacuzzis. They've still got the ribs, the rigid inflatable boat, so that when we are um, in even more wonderful, exotic places around the world, we can launch those rib boats into the water, whether you're down in Antarctic, um, up in the Arctic, or um, various other places around the world. Uh, we've still got our fitness centre, it's just on a bigger scale on the new ship, spa, hairdressers, library, shops, and so forth. And then Borealis, so Belletta and Borealis, very similar indeed. In fact, um, having been on both ships now, seeing that they've been refurbished and everything, very difficult actually to tell which ship you're on. Uh, probably the only way to tell this is by the colour scheme of the carpets and the decor, um, almost identical ships. So Borealis is going to be sailing out of Liverpool, and that's going to be her home port, um, and she'll be setting sail in just a few days' time also going up to Norway to see the Northern Lights at this time of year. So 1,360 passengers on board Borealis. So what's new on these new ships? Um, well, to give you an idea, um, so these two ships used to belong to a different cruise line called Holland America. And when we purchased these ships, they were quite dark ships. So we've lightened everything. Uh, we've reupholstered everything from the curtains, the lighting, the USB charging ports um, in the cabins, you name it, we've ripped it out and put new stuff in. So if you've certainly been on a Fred Olsen ship before, you're going to set sail on these ones and know exactly that you are on a Fred Olsen ship. So we've added things, um, as you probably would expect, with our market being the British market, seeing coffee making facilities in the cabins, everything. We've made them very much um, a Fred Olsen ships and put our stamp on them. Probably one of the biggest um, areas of change on the ships, uh, if you've cruised with us before, um, the Atlantis Spa is a much, much larger area on the new ships. So we've really got a thermal suite with um, heated lounges, as you can see in the picture, sauna, steam rooms, hydrotherapy pools, and many, many more treatment rooms on offer. Um, so that's a real plus for us. And there's great sea views. You can sit in the whirlpools up on, up on that deck and really, um, Still not miss everything that you're sailing by, particularly if you're in places very scenic like Norway. Colours and tastes. Um, this is one of our new speciality restaurants and it's focusing on Asian fusion food. Um, so things like grilled meats, seafood, sushi, classic Chinese and Thai favourites. Now, I probably made the mistake of going in this restaurant on the last night of the cruise. Um, and I say mistake because it was absolutely amazing food and I wish I had more nights on board to have gone back and experienced this restaurant again and again. Now, being a speciality restaurant, there is a charge and it's a very, very small charge at the moment. It's an introductory offer of five pounds per person um, and that has become extremely, extremely popular. Um, I'm sure that won't stay five pounds for long. So if you are sailing with us soon, um, I would recommend going in and tasting uh, the food in the Colours and Taste restaurant because it's absolutely magnificent. As you can see here, it's all nicely decorated. Um, so that's one of our speciality restaurants. 
We have another, it's called Vasco, which is up on the top deck. And this is um, a fresh and modern take on Indian food. So we do have many Thai and also Indian chefs on board our ship. And they make some of the most amazing curries. Although it's a speciality restaurant, there is no additional charge to eat in Vasco. But we do recommend booking because it's not a huge restaurant. Um, so we obviously um, do take bookings to go in there of an evening. And with the speciality restaurants, they are open every single night of the cruise. We also have an auditorium which is new for us so this is where we are able to do other things that we've not done before such as cooking demonstrations so you can go and watch the chefs cook the food that you may be eating later on that evening um, they can do demonstrations and of course the good thing is you get to eat it and taste it at the end this auditorium also doubles up as a cinema on board the ships and if you've got groups or um, I don't know, you're, you've got a group of um, choir singers or anything like that. It's just an extra venue on board. You could possibly um, book out if you wanted to um, do like a private, a private meeting in there. Not forgetting, of course, that we still do have two other ships. We, of course, have Balmoral. She's going to be returning to the ocean uh, very soon, actually, in May. So she's going to be setting sail from Southampton, from Portsmouth, from Dover, and also Newcastle and Rosyth uh, from May um, to the end of 2022. So we can't wait to get her back into the water. So just to give you an idea on capacity, 1,325, so very, very similar numbers to our two new ships. And of course, not forgetting our baby, Brema. She is very much staying with the Fred Olsen fleet. We're just not quite ready to bring her back into the water yet. Um, being the baby, she carries just over 900 passengers. Um, we are now hoping to bring her back into the water of April 2023. The reason for her delay is because we want we wanted, of course, to bring her back as sooner, um, but the climate is still quite volatile at the moment with destinations and COVID. And even though when we bring Balmoral back in May, our ship capacity is greater with three ships um, than we were pre-pandemic with four ships. So uh, we're just going to wait that a little bit longer, wait for the market to fully pick up, and then Braemar will be back. Um, to do Mediterranean cruising and then back in for the fly cruising season of the winter of 23-24. So she's still very much our, she's just up in Scotland still, um, up with Balmoral up in the Babcock docks at the moment. So let's have a quick look at the Olsen world and the Olsen way and where we can take you. So very much being a, um, an independent company, we can take you the world over. There are some new and exciting destinations that we can take you to in 2023 and 2024 and beyond. Um, and one of those new destinations, I will talk a little bit more in, the, in just a moment, but it's going to be Antarctica that we've never been to before. And we are, are very proud winners of the Cruise Critic Awards for the best cruise line for best itineraries. So every time we plan new itineraries and the new ones will be coming out um, in not that far away now, actually, that we've we've won that for five consecutive years. So we know we're doing things right in the fact that we've won that award and that we have so many loyal passengers that keep coming back to Fred Olsen time and time again. So we do set sail from um, more regional UK departure ports than any other cruise line. Uh, Tilbury, Dover, Portsmouth, Southampton, probably key um, for us in the south. Then we have Liverpool, Newcastle and Rosyth and Belfast as well. So I'm just quickly going to talk to you about the cruise sale that we have at the moment. Uh, so January um, is traditionally a very, very busy time for people booking holidays uh, pre-pandemic. Post-pandemic, I think with the news of um, lateral flows being dropped and things like that, uh, we've certainly seen sales go through the roof for January and I'm sure Baldwin's have too. Um, so we've decided to extend our cruise sale. It was on until the 1st of Feb. We've extended that through to the 1st of March and we're actually expecting February to um, actually beat January with bookings. So it's incredible at the moment. I think where people haven't had a holiday for a couple of years, um, everyone's just going crazy now and booking. So our cruise sale is on. Um, prices start at 699 and we have the offer of free drinks and tips. 
And this is based on if you're booking a 2022 or 2023 cruise, 18 nights or less. So again, we've got worldwide destinations or simply short scenic breaks to choose from. We also have a lot of cruises that have got um, either no single supplements or reduced supplements in that cruise sale. Um, a few of them take setting sail from Dover, Southampton and Portsmouth as well. So some great offers if you are a solo guest, um, you can stay in a twin cabin for sole occupancy, at either no extra charge or maybe a small supplement. Um, and Baldwin's do have a list of those cruises. So if you do need to get in touch and want to know exactly which ones they are, um, speak to your travel agent at Baldwin's and they'll be able to help. We've also got the enjoyment promise that's still in place which means that if you've never cruised with Fred or you've cruised a hundred times with us before, if you step on board and maybe you're not enjoying yourself for whatever reason, uh, let us know within the first 48 hours of um, setting foot on the ship and we will fly you home from the first opportunity and give you a full refund. So it's almost like a safety net. So if you've never cruised with Fred Olsen before, or maybe you haven't yet been on our new ships and you're not quite sure what it's gonna be like, or you've not cruised post COVID, um, book a cruise and then if you really aren't enjoying it you've got that safety net that you can go home within 48 hours and we would give you a full refund so it's kind of safety net we also have our plane sailing guarantee and our travel ready service so this is very new um, I'm just going to close this blind a second I've got the sun shining through the window Seems a shame to block it out but I can't see <laughs> um, so our new travel ready service um, I was talking to a travel agent the other day and he said, I think the biggest problem that people have now for booking a holiday is having to do all the paperwork. It's not necessarily the testing or the fear of COVID, it's the paperwork that goes with it. And he actually said to me, it's all the faff involved. So if we can take the faff out of that, um, such as all your paperwork, whether that's your NHS COVID passport, your uh, lateral flow testing, your locator forms, um, anything like that, for a fee of just £29 per person, we will do all of that for you. All we'd need is your NHS number and your name, um, and we will be able to download all those forms that you need. We will fill out the locator forms, whether it's a form coming back into the UK or a form to enter the destination that you are visiting. We will do all of that for you at a fee of £29 per person. Should any of that change where you're actually on board our ships if you um you need a new test or you need to fill out a new piece of paperwork and you're on board and these restrictions change where you're visiting of course we'll do all that for you as well so it's a really really good thing actually and like i said it just takes that stress and hassle away from you doing it so if you do need us to do it let us know and we can um get in touch three weeks prior to departure um, and you can sign up for that. So at the moment, it's £29 per person. Should that change, if you need extra um, LFTs or any extra um, PCR testing, then the price may go up, but it starts at £29. And we wouldn't be able to tell you what it is until three weeks prior to departure. But it's great to know that that service is there for you. So what is required per cruise? I'm just going to touch on this because um, some of you probably haven't cruised for a little while, but everybody needs to have vaccinations um, to sail with us. And that includes the booster. From the 1st of April, we are changing our child policy. So anybody over the age of two and under the age of 12 um, don't necessarily need to be vaccinated to join our cruise departures. Everybody on board, we still ask them to wear face masks when walking around the ship, but of course, when they're sat down in the bars and the restaurants and theatres and things, you don't have to wear their face masks, it's just walking around the ship. And we are still asking people to be socially distance aware and remaining in social bubbles um, so that if there were any outbreaks on board our ships, that we can control it and contain it as quickly and easily as possible. And of course, the buffets, they're still being served by our crew rather than self-service. Trace safe bands, we ask everybody on board and we, we provide them at check-in is a trace safe band. So should anybody um, test positive for COVID on board a ship, then we will be able to identify who that individual has had close contact with through their trace safe bands. 
and we can do all PCR testing and LFT testing on board as well. Shore excursions, you can go ashore independently in every port that we're operating in at the moment, which is great news. So you don't have to just be on a tour, you can wander off and do your own thing. And of course, everybody joining our ship um, has to have a, lateral, a negative lateral flow taken at the port. And then if you are staying with us for a lot longer cruise, we'll also be testing you during that cruise. Um, just like we do with our crew, we're testing them twice a week at the moment. So for Baldwins, we've got some special offers that are exclusive to Baldwins. Um, some great cruises where we are giving you an extra onboard spending credit. So we've got a couple of these departures where it's exclusive to Baldwins that they can get an extra onboard spend. So for example, this one heading down to the French Riviera and Monaco Grand Prix will give you um, an extra £100 per person onboard spending offer if you book with Baldwins. We also have this one to visit Norway, the Norwegian Fjords. It's departing from Dover and it's also going to be visiting the home of the Olsen. So you can go and see the Fred Olsen family home um, and have a tour around their gardens and seeing all their artefacts from the historic ships that they used to have. So it's a great cruise to Norway if you've never been. It does take in Flom and Oslo as well. Great places in Norway. And that one comes with an extra £60 per person on board spend. This one is setting off from Dover as well. This one's doing the French rivers in Bordeaux. And this one also has a hundred pounds extra per person on board spend if you book with Baldwin's going out in October. So this is Balmoral. And this one is recently actually changed. It was originally departing from Portsmouth and we've changed it over to setting sail from Dover. Um, Northern Lights this winter um, have been absolutely incredible. Um, so much so there have been um, some great sightings up in Scotland as well but this is a great place to go up and see the Northern Lights uh, from Dover in November also on board Balmoral and we'd also give you £100 on board spending credit. Um, if you want to head towards the sunshine we of course will be setting sail um, on Balletta, our flagship from Tilbury later this year and this is a departure going out in November with £85 per person on board spending credit down to uh, the Mediterranean, highlights being Malta and of course Sardinia. So they're just a few of the cruises where we've got extra on board spending credit if you book with Baldwin's. Um, some other cruises, I will tell you what's happening with regards to trends at the moment. I think where people haven't had a holiday for a couple of years, they've got a bit more money to spend. They're either spending it on upgrading um, accommodation or flights, business class and so forth, um, or just deciding to have an extra, uh, a bigger cabin or a suite than they would normally have, We'll certainly go in for a more exotic, longer worldwide destination. So we've got our South America cruise heading down to the Arctic. So the very first time we're going to be going to the Arctic. And this is a um, anti-clockwise direction around South America. Uh, 78 nights from Southampton in 2023. Now, obviously, we haven't done world cruises or grand voyages for a couple of years. Um, so these are back in, certainly back in the diary and back in the plans for 23 and also 2024. So we've got a world cruise going out in 2023. It's around the world in 80 days. You may have heard about it. Um, it's almost sold out. So already we've had to put 2024 on sale, which is incredible. Um, and then the 2024 one is heading out west to the west coast of, I'm um, sorry, the east coast of America, down to the Caribbean, through the Panama, up the coast of Mexico, over to Hawaii, down to French Polynesia, Bora Bora, Tahiti, New Zealand, Australia. Uh, Southeast Asia, including Bali and Komodo, Singapore, Thailand, up through India, the Middle East, you've got the Red Sea, um, the Suez, back up through the Med and home. So it's a fantastic itinerary. Uh, setting sail from Southampton, or if you are living a bit further north or have friends that live in the north, they can jump on board in Liverpool. And as you can see on that, 2024, inside cabins are already all sold out. So um, if you do want to book a cruise, whether it's later this year, uh, next year, or even 2024, my advice would be don't delay it because 
um, people are booking where they haven't had a holiday for a few years, booking up pretty quickly. Um, and finally, just leaves me to say, um, don't forget that, as I've mentioned it already, we have more returning guests than any other cruise line, so you can be confident in sailing with us. 